Last week, we ended up getting a title update for Black Ops 4 that was roughly right around the 10 gigabyte mark for whatever console or platform you may be on. The interesting part was that it didn't really give us immediately anything that really explained that 10 gigabytes, that massive file size, because the most we ended up getting last week was really the Fall Firearms deal and a few other minor things. Xbox One and PC, yes, did get Nuketown, but that was something that was included in the week before that, the title update that happened two weeks ago. So as of today, we actually finally got some clarity on what was in that because we did get an update to Black Ops 4 today that wasn't a title update, nothing that you had to actually go in and download download, but instead just a simple playlist update in which you had to restart your game. And with that came a lot of things that again were hidden in the game files from last week and a lot more on top of that. So today I want to talk to you guys about everything that really changed in today's update as of November 27th in Black Ops 4. So that said, let's jump into it. The first and probably biggest thing here out of this and what is caused for probably a large portion of that 10 gigabyte update that we had as of last week that was time gated for today was the inclusion of Seaside Sunset and Firing Range Night. New maps that were leaked as of this past week actually and are slight subtle variations of the maps of Seaside and Firing Range already. Seaside Sunset is a little bit of, again, what the name suggests, a sunset vibe. A massive lens flares off in the distance and it's not as dark as Firing Range Night but it's definitely toned down compared to if you compare it from the straight up normal version of Seaside and Firing Range Night, that's something that, again, just like what we saw, say, make and day back in World of War, the same night and day difference here with that. So they play exactly the same hard points, domination points, spawns, all the same, all exactly how you know it already, but just again some slight subtle variations in the lighting and some other aesthetic changes. Now the interesting part to me are, well, two pieces to this. Firstly, it's not exclusive just to PlayStation 4. When I saw that new maps were in the game files, I immediately went to probably where all your heads went, that PlayStation 4 would get these a week early. That's actually not the case, it's on all platforms, it's on Xbox One, PC, as well as PlayStation 4, and so that's kind of strange to me, because we saw the same sort of situation with Nuketown, but that was time-gated by 7 days. So I'm wondering if this doesn't apply to subtle variations or air quote remakes of maps that are already in the game, and if that's the case, then that's a strange little interesting loophole that we have here with that system. So. I don't know, but for Xbox One and PC users, jump on, you have this at the same time as everybody else. Additionally, it's also not in custom games. These maps, along with Nuketown, are still not in private matches, so you can't go and do the Easter eggs for that on Nuketown. You can't go and take a look at whatever may be hidden in there, if anything, that is different from the regular Seaside and at firing range compared to their new counterparts of the nighttime maps. So that's unfortunate, but maybe we end up seeing that added in as of the next update? Who knows? It's really just anyone's wild guess at this point. After that though, we end up seeing that we have a handful of brand new game modes added in or slight alterations to some game modes. Firstly, let's talk about the biggest one here. It's the brand new featured playlists for this week, that being Safeguard added in. Now the interesting part is this is only on PlayStation 4. We just mentioned new maps came to everybody at the same time, but a new mode is not a part of that sort of equal playing ground across all platforms right now. And I will say from having played a little bit of Safeguard, it is honestly very hellish. I truthfully haven't played Safeguard in a couple of years now at this point since Black Ops 3 had it introduced, but it is quite hectic in terms of spawns. The teammates that I ended up having probably didn't help out all that much to my experience, but it's something that it is what it is. Two rounds though, attacking and defending, and then an overtime as well, if it ends up taking that long to get a win. But if you wanna rack up some kills or just play around with something that is brand new in Black Ops 4, that's available on offer for all you guys to check out right now on PlayStation 4. I'm assuming that again, this comes next week to Xbox One and PC. Now, other things included, which aren't just necessarily for PlayStation 4, is Chaos Hardpoint. Now, this is a little bit different from your standard hardpoint because, well, one, the score goes up to 1,000. There also is random hardpoints. There's no set rotation as like what you'd normally see in the standard variation of hardpoint. So anything is random, it's going to be insane. And honestly, playing on some of the maps, the biggest one here that I definitely had a problem with was Nuketown. With the random spawns, it flips pretty much every other second. So you're going to die a lot. You're going to get shot in the back a lot. And if you don't have a full party, well, it might get a little bit tough. I played solo and that was a big mistake. 
But regardless, you also end up having the ability to score more points per second based off of how many players are on the hard point. So it seems like each one right now, the add-on is another point per second you end up getting. So whereas if you have one person on the hill, you have one point per second. But if you theoretically have six players on the hill, then it's six points per second. So it really comes down to how many players are willing to jump in and play objectively, and that can really help speed along the process. So that's something definitely really interesting, a nice little twist on it, but a fun little spin on Hardpoint as we know it is available for all platforms right now. Additionally, another playlist was added in, that being Hardcore Nuketown as a featured playlist. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's just Nuketown of Domination, Kill Confirmed, and TDM, but with Hardcore rule sets. So Friendly Fire, 30 HP, no HUD or minimap or anything like that. So play away to your heart's content. This was already there in some regular playlists, but it's a 24-7 playlist instead of just the RNG factor of getting it in a random hardcore lobby. So take advantage of that if you guys want to as well. Additionally, Mercenary Objective Mosh Pit is back, so that's something that'll task you with playing on all the maps, all the objective-based modes. So that's pretty fun to play around with, but it's up to you guys if you really want to go in and take advantage of that one. Now, the final thing that I'll mention here is that Gun Game and the Endurance Mosh Pits were both dropped. They're no longer there in any capacity. You can't take a look at those in your standard core game modes or in your feature playlists. They are just gone. So whether or not they'll be returning and if they are when, that's something that nobody really knows the answer to and your guess is as good as mine. Now, flipping over to another area that was updated, we end up seeing that Blackjack Shop did get new items refreshed out. There's new features of Ajax and Nomad Muertos themed items on PlayStation 4 and still a bit behind on Xbox One and PC. So last week's what we had on PlayStation 4 is now the current items within the Blackjack Shop in terms of what is there for Xbox One and PC. The special orders are a profit and Crash Muertos themed item once again on PlayStation 4. No more bundle in the special orders for PlayStation 4 users, which I'm kind of happy about, though I won't keep it long before it's probably back with another one returning. But talking about special orders for Xbox One and PC, the Fall Firearms bundle or air quote deal, though I really wouldn't call it that in all seriousness, is available on Xbox One and PC. For 2,000 COD points, again, you have the opportunity to end up getting the Divinity Strife Pistol signature weapon variants, as well as the Carbon Cobra signature Maddox variant, which again, I don't agree with this one at all. 20 bucks a third of the base game for the ability to get two signature weapon variants, one that was an exclusive from GameStop pre-orders, and two, one that was given to everybody for free as of right around launch time that was then subsequently taken out and taken away from everybody. So double dipping in a sense there, but that's available for you guys if you want to check it out. I don't agree with it, but my job is to give you the cold hard facts, not necessarily harp continuously on the entire system, how much I dislike it. That said, any bias or anything like that aside, let's jump into another area that ended up getting updated, that being Blackout. First up, we end up seeing the Blightfather event come back here, whether or not that's for this week in particular or coming back for just a few days before the weekend is over as of this weekend. Your guess is as good as mine, but it's actually been changed out a little bit as well because in solos and duos, it's now got lessened health. And that's something that I am very happy to hear because if you try to do this in solos or duos, it would probably take you forever. Or if you didn't even complete it at all, that's probably likely as well because it was very very much so suited to reward those players that do take advantage of that in quads. The health was absolutely ridiculous. Plus, if you looked at the rewards it gave you of two kitted out rifles, two kitted out snipers, two level three armors, a ray gun and an MP40 or one other weapon that was on that zombies rotation, and then also a few trauma kits, it really rewarded those players that were more so in quads. Just by what was given and how the health was structured, it didn't really favor those players that tried to do it in solos and duos, but now it should be a little bit easier to do and I haven't seen just yet if the rewards are exactly the same or if those are lessened as well but regardless it should be easier to take out. Additionally the Bowie knife is going to be available much more often. It is easier to find as it's been placed in a lot more stash spawns. The loot pool for that is upped so that number is increased across the map so you might be encountering some more sneaky beavers that do end up having the Bowie knife that are going for those one hit kills. So just be careful, watch your back and be aware of your surroundings so nobody sneaks up on you. And the final thing that we'll talk about here in terms of blackout changes are that the zombies character missions of Primus are actually now available. Nikolai, Takiao, Richtofen, and Dempsey are all currently in-game that you can end up going in and doing this. Now, one thing that I will say is that Treyarch mentioned these are PS4 only, but on PC, 
it says that they're unlocked as well. So unless it's another visual bug, I can only imagine that Xbox One is the same way in which it's available for all platforms. If you guys are interested in this, I will have an in-depth guide coming up on this very, very shortly, probably tomorrow's video. We'll have that explained in full detail for you guys that are interested in going for those. But that said, outside of that, other changes, there's not really all that many. There are some things like Nuketown, the out-of-map exploits. Those have been patched up so you can no longer do those. And there's also more zombies zombie stability overall and some nine specific fixes as well for that map in particular. But outside of that, that's really all there was to it. A lot more just playlist things and some more minor issues that again, didn't warrant an entire title update like what we saw the past couple of weeks, but instead this was time gated events that were happening as of last week's title update. So that said, that's gonna wrap it up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it insightful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What's your favorite part here out of what was added in today? Is there anything that you guys are looking forward to or you guys are really happy was added in? Whatever it is, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. But that said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 4, multiplayer, blackout, zombies, you name it. We got you covered with the best of updates, information, news, tips, tricks, all that good stuff. We got you covered. So any of the issues you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. If you guys want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube. Practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check those out, links are in the description to those. But that's really it. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Mine is Espresso, and I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.